Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the first ever AGT Time Fantasy Draft. I'm <laughs> Cody Patterson. <laughs> Along with me is the illustrious, the forever drafting Cody Mims. <laughs> Thank you. I think you mean future champion. <laughs> Oh, that's already the the smack has begun. I'm sorry, I crossed the line, but I'm very excited <laughs> for this. I think it's going to be fun. I'm I'm very excited for this too. Typically, we've just uh, picked ten people, tick ten acts that we think are going to do well. A lot of times, there's a lot of crossover. Um, it's just blind prediction, and this is going to be kind of blind prediction. But this time, we're actually going to pick uh, fantasy style. So we have 33 acts uh, that we know that are going to perform. We're each going to pick 10 acts. Uh, so we'll have, it's kind of like a team. We'll have different, different people on our, on our fantasy team here uh, in honor of uh, fantasy football that's getting ready to start. Uh, but we do have some rules that we're going to go over real quick so everybody kind of knows what we're doing. So as I said, we're going to have uh, 10 acts on our team, but... We're only allowed to pick five singers, at most five singers, because there's so many, and uh, it seems that the, the, the that it's pretty stacked with singers. So we're limiting it to five singers and five of everything else. So uh, we have uh, 18 singers, and I just kind of want to touch what that means. That's any act that has singing in their performance. So that would include like the singing Trump, include Mirror Image, uh, it would include Darcy Lynn Farmer. So if they do some sort of singing in their performance, they're a singing act. And then we have everybody else. So we have the comedians and the magicians and the danger acts and, and all that uh, in there. So we're going to pick our teams. Um, and, and then, you know, we still have three performances that we don't know yet, wild cards. So once we find out our wild card, then we're going to be allowed to swap out one wild card if we choose to with any act that is not performed yet. Uh, so we can choose to do that. Uh, once we get our team together, and then once they've kind of gone through each round, we're going to assign some points. So if they uh, if they do good in quarterfinals and they move to semifinals, we're going to uh, give them a point. If they move from semi semifinals to the finals, we're going to give two points. If they make it into the top five, they get four points. And if we happen to pick the winner then you get 50 points. So basically, if you pick the winner, then you win the fantasy league for the season. How's that sound to you? Does that sound pretty good? Yeah, I think one of us is definitely going to pick the winner. I, I I don't know that we would pick 20 acts and miss it. No, I think, yeah, if we pick 20 out of the 36, I think our odds are pretty good that we're going to pick pick the winner here. So <laughs> yeah, um, I was going to do this kind of a random number and, you know, figure out kind of like a coin toss of whoever's going to go first, but I'm going to give my podcast co-host the honor of making the first pick. And we're going to do this uh, snake snake draft. So he'll do a pick and then I'll do a pick and then I'll do another pick and then he'll do two picks. So basically after he does the first pick after that, we'll have two picks in a row. So whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and make your first pick. All right. Um, the stakes are so high. Uh, <laughs> I'm really curious uh, whether we both have the same first pick in mind because I think my, mine is an interesting choice. I'm I feel weird even saying it, uh, but my first pick for this season is the singing Trump. Oh, that was my first pick. <laughs> so wow, it it is kind of weird to have you pick that because i had a feeling he wasn't that you weren't very high on him so kind of explain why you're going with the singing trump no i'm i'm not very high on him but <laughs> i i think there's several reasons why he might actually end up taking this thing i think he is the act that people are talking about this is i mean everyone sort of knows this guy and wants to show him to other people uh and also people on every end of the political spectrum seem to really like this act for whatever reason, um, but I, I think there might be uh, that might influence people's votes too as well, and uh, I kind of can see a path that mirrors that of the actual 2016 election. Like it, you know, it, it seems like you can't get any farther, and then 
and then he does maybe that's not based in uh <laughs> much logical reasoning but i think it's it's very possible that his uh sort of personality and character uh is something that people could actually really gravitate towards and vote for and um another sort of weird thing i was thinking about last night when i was making this draft is like let's think about what happens when this guy gets to like the semifinals does the president of the United States start tweeting about this act? I think it's possible. We're nearing the possibility of some insane stuff going down, so I think this guy might actually be propelled to victory. No, I completely agree with you on this. Uh, you know, We've seen Mel B twice buzz this guy, but I'm with you that it doesn't matter of your political affiliation. I think that this guy is entertaining. He's funny. Uh, I, I think he could really get some momentum going into the live shows. Uh, it's, it's a very strong possibility that the real Donald Trump, you know, ha- uh, the Twitter handle, the real Donald Trump is going to tweet about this. So um, I think that's a very strong number one pick and probably one of the favorites going into the live show. Yeah, I'm sorry to steal it from you, but I think it's really interesting that we both chose this as the number one pick. I don't know what that says, but <laughs> yeah. Now, you know, I was kind of, as I was putting together my draft board, I was trying to think, okay, do I want to go with my heart or do I need to go with my mind and think, okay, who is America going to vote for? And as much as I love, I mean, I love the singing trap. I think he's great, but I also think America is going to vote for him. Um, so I, I think you made the right move. It's no big deal that you took him. I'm not <laughs> mad. I think it's, it's, uh, it's a logical choice to pick him. He, I think he is one of the top five favorites going into the live shows. Yeah. Well, do you have anything else on the singing trap? Uh, that's all I got. I'm, I'm interested to hear your next picks. Well, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and make two picks. So my number one pick is going to be Colin Cloud. Okay. Um, I think he's very similar to what the clairvoyance did last year, uh, except he does it by himself. I think he might even be a little bit better than what the clairvoyance did last year. Uh, they got into the, the finals. They went very, very far. You know, now that the singing Trump is gone, I'm not sure Colin Cloud will be able to win this. Um, but I have a feeling that he's going to do do pretty well and at least get into the the final five. Yeah, that's interesting. I had him sort of lower down on my list. He's my number fourteen choice in case it uh, actually came down to that. But uh, yeah, I I agree. He could certainly do well. Uh, I don't think he'll ever make himself look silly on stage or anything like that. I don't think he's going to really bomb. So I think he should have a steady path to the finals. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Okay, so for my second pick, for the number three pick on this, I'm going to go with a singer. And I had a tough time with the singers because a lot of them are very similar. Uh, I had to go back and review uh, even the singers from auditions because we haven't seen four of the golden buzzers since auditions. Uh, so I had to kind of review this because a lot of them are very similar to me, like uh, Angelica Hale, Angelina Green, Celine Tam, you know, Evie Claire. Uh, they're, they're all very, it, it, they're all alike. They're all young and they're all good singers. So the one uh, singer that I'm going to go with on my, uh, my number two, the number three pick is right now is Angelica Hale. Oh, Okay, that's uh, she was one of my top singers. Yeah, uh, tell me uh, why you picked her. Well, she's she's uh, the nine year old from uh, that that's uh, well, I already lost all my notes on her, but I, I think she was one of the top singers from auditions. Um, there's absolutely several others that could do very well. Uh, I just after reviewing her, I just thought she was one of the the top favorites. Simon seemed to really like her, and I think America is going to really like her. Uh, so I, I think that she's going to do very well and go very far. Yeah, I, I agree. Let me make my case in support of Angelica Hale because I think that is a really good pick. Um, I know people think that they love Celine Tam, but they really love Angelica Hale. Uh, this nine-year-old singer has a more powerful voice and clearer pitches, 
And I think once she starts picking grander songs to correspond with the later rounds, she'll be a major standout singer. Absolutely. And she was Chris Hardwick's golden buzzer. So that's right. That's something. <laughs> uh, she was the chosen one. Mm hmm. <laughs> okay. So if you want to go ahead and do your second pick, your second and third pick. Okay. Uh, so my first singing pick, uh, my next choice will be Mandy Harvey. That, that's because... absolutely a very good pick. Yes. Yeah. She is a singer. You can't forget. Um, she's also superficially similar to Grace Vanderwall. You know, she's like a white girl with original songs who plays guitar or something. I think, well, maybe she doesn't do that. I don't even remember. It's been so long, but I think she's, she's a pretty strong choice. Uh, she's Simon's golden buzzer, but way better than Callista Bevier last year. So that might have some power to propel her. (laughs) Yeah, Mandy is the the deaf singer, and she plays the ukulele just like Grace did. Uh, she's got that uh, charm. Um, she's very very happy, very very glad to be there. She's been able to do a lot with her music, but even though she can't hear the music, she's learned how to feel the music and how to stay on pitch. Uh, she has her translator, and even the relationship between the judges and her. Uh, seemed very good. So I think you did very well by making that pick. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, my next choice would be light balance. And, okay. uh, you know, looking at the data, <laughs> they're my third draft pick because Team Illuminate got third place. Um, the concept is not as fresh now, but these guys raise the bar enough to put them in the top five, I think. And they're tired of Golden Buzzer, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, yeah, I'm actually very glad that this was uh, one of the non-singing golden buzzers. Um, yeah. I think that'll really kind of help them. They've had some time to put something together uh, with Illuminate kind of having or setting the, it's not really the trend, but uh, <laughs> illuminating us to the fact that this art is out there. Um, I think that they'll have uh, some strong... Uh, some strong performances yeah absolutely so uh who's who's your next pick uh so i'm gonna go with darcy lynn farmer okay um so we saw darcy lynn uh in auditions another golden buzzer she's the ventriloquist that can sing um i've been kind of reading up on her a little bit and some people are thinking that she's going to bring out a new puppet and do something different so i'm interested to see if she is going to continue to sing we have her in the singing category because that's what she did in the beginning that's all we know about her but it'd be interesting to see if she's going to do something different uh, if she can continue to do what she did in auditions so i'm excited i like ventriloquists Uh, i think they're real funny uh that you know they can be real creative with their dolls uh or their puppets uh, so I'm, I'm excited to see Darcy Lynn Farmer, and I think that America will love Darcy Lynn Farmer. Yeah, that's a good choice. She was my number eight pick because uh, people are already major fans of hers. You know, uh, I'm not, but people think she's cute and enjoyable, and uh, it wouldn't be the first time a singing ventriloquist has done well. Right. Um so, you know, ventriloquists have, we had a ventriloquist actually win this at the very beginning of this, of, of America's Got Talent. So, you know, I think that, I don't know if she'll be able to win, but I think she can, she can go pretty far and, and do really well. Yeah. And she's Mel B's golden buzzer. And she is Mel B's golden buzzer. That's right. Uh, for my next pick, I'm kind of debating between uh, two acts. Um, I want to go with either one that I really love that that's uh that's a really great act or one that i've been reading that america seems to really like um but i'm not too big on so i think i'm gonna go with the act that i really like okay and and hope that the other one is still there later on so i'm gonna go with diavolo okay cool um i really like diavolo i think they're very creative uh the the their audition where they had the the swinging um, I don't even know what it was called. The, the, swing, the swinging device. They went back and forth. The way they, 
their their coordination, their uh, the, the way that they trust each other. I think it's just a fantastic act. It's one of my favorites of the season. Um, I, you know, they they did the they they turned a some pair of stairs into a train in the in their judge cut. So I'm excited to see what they're going to pull out in the next episode. Yeah, they're my number 15. I think they should end up amazing everybody if they don't kill themselves first. (laughs) I know they've had a lot of injuries. Yes, but they seem to carry on very well. Yeah. Um, is it, is it my turn again? It's your turn. Yep. Go ahead. Okay. My next choice is Christian Gardino. Um, cause he has a super lovable personality and, uh, also he's Howie's golden buzzer and Howie is the only regular ju- judge to have golden buzzered a winner. So I think he knows what he's doing with the golden buzzers. Uh, yeah, I had Christian down, um, and I kind of separated my list out into the singers and non-singers as well and not really an overall list, but I had, I had him down as the number nine singer on my list. So I'm not too high on him as much as I am. Some of the other singers, um, we don't know a lot about him, uh, but you're right. Uh, how he knows how to pick golden buzzers. So uh, yeah, maybe he'll make it, maybe he'll make it two for two. Yeah. Well, uh, I look forward to his mystery unfolding. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I really like him too. Uh, I, I enjoyed his audition for sure. Okay. Uh, so my next pick, since you took Angelica Hale, shall be Just Jerk. Okay. Um, they're really likable dudes with an interesting backstory and incredible dancing. And I really think that they could be the most successful dance group on AGT in a long time. Oh, okay. I know I made that bold prediction uh, a few episodes back, so uh, I, I'm definitely sticking to it. Okay. Uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of in the opposite direction than you on Just Jerk. I'm not a big fan of theirs. Uh, the two times that they've been on, I've not been that interested. I I think Diavolo is a better dance group than they are. Um, I think they're they're more there's more coordination. There's more of them. It's more complicated dance moves. Um, but so, so I mean, I can understand why you pick Just Jerk. You've been high on them. Every time we've talked about them, uh, just I think I had them much further down. Actually, on my board, I had them at number five, but that's just because I think America is going to join them, uh, enjoy them, and not because I liked them. Yeah, well, uh, I, I am looking forward to our dance groups facing off. <laughs> yes, yeah, I think it'll be very interesting once we actually get some dance groups in there. Yeah. Um, so for my next one, I'm going to go, um, and I was hoping this guy would be there, uh, this next time around, cause I'm going to pick him now and I don't enjoy him. I don't think he's very good, but he, he's got a real high following. Um, I think people are going to vote for him just because of who he is and just because of what he can do. I'm going with Merrick Hanna. <laughs> okay. He was my number 20. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Again, I had to decide whether I wanted to go with people that I enjoy or who I thought America was going to vote for. And if this was on who I enjoy, he would be at the very bottom of my list. But I think uh, just from kind of reading some, some posts on Reddit, and that's the only resource I've been going by, people apparently really, really, apparently really like him. Um, so, you know, I, I may eat my words and he may go out in quarterfinals um, or he could go all the way into the top five there is no telling where he can end up so I'm going to take a risk on Merrick Canna and uh, hope he does well yeah I I think that is uh, a good choice looking at like uh, you know the numbers and everything people he is very popular now Um, I just kind of see him running out of steam or something I don't know like his first his uh, second performance I think was pretty similar to the first one and not really much better so uh i don't know that i see a strong trajectory towards him but uh people do definitely really like him right now yes yes and that's that's what i'm banking on so uh i won't be cheering for him uh i know it's real bad to say about a 10 year old boy but uh i don't think his dancing is very good but you know i always wish well on others and 
that they perform well. So I don't want him to crash and burn. I want him to do well. Uh, I just don't think he'll be able to. Yeah. Okay. So for my next pick, I'm going to go with Evie Claire. Okay. Um, rewatching her audition. I really enjoyed this. And this was, um, I couldn't tell. I don't think she was a golden buzzer. Or no, she no. was, um, she, was she, um, DJ Khaled's golden buzzer? No, I don't think so. She wasn't a gold buzzer at all. Okay, I should have brought up my notes and and uh, checked myself. But anyway, I really enjoyed uh, her performance when I went back and rewatched them. Uh, I think that other people are really going to enjoy her. She's got kind of that. She's got a story right now where uh, her dad is not doing so well. Uh, he's got his, the health issues. Um, so I think that's going to come into play on a lot of stuff. And I, I don't want to profit off of. Um, her dad's cancer. Uh, that's, that's really, really bad stuff. Um, I never mentioned this on this podcast before. My father passed away from cancer. It's really, really bad stuff to watch. Um, it's really scary. Um, but I think it's, I think it's going to come into play. It shouldn't. I, I don't think that, that AGT should be trying to promote this at all. Um, when when they when there's someone out there that's really sick, but I think it is going to come into play, and I think people are going to vote for her based on that, as well as her singing. I think her singing is still really good as well. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing with her: is her emotional story affects every one of her performances. Uh, all of her songs are directly re- like to her father, who's in the audience. So, I I definitely agree that'll be a big part of it. She was my number ten pick. Yeah, you, you mentioned that both the times that I watched it, she she came out on the stage crying. She had trouble getting started on her singing because she was crying so much trying to uh, explain explain her story. Yeah, so uh, that's that's a good choice. Okay, uh, okay, go ahead and make your two picks. Okay, my next one will be the Masqueraders. Oh, Ooh. okay. <laughs> I think they're this season's best singing group, and uh, they have a long storied history in music, and they're very likable guys. Um, last year, uh, Lincoln Bridge made it very far, and I think we will probably have another singing group into the finals or something, and I think it's going to be them. I think that's a very good pick. I love the Masqueraders. I love that they sing songs from their generation. They're not trying to sing current songs, and it's not young kids trying to sing songs from that generation. It's actually their generation. I think that adds a lot to it. They're a lot of fun to watch. Uh, their interaction with the judges is is fantastic. Uh, yeah, they get they do a lot of stuff. Yeah, I love the yeahs. Uh, so <laughs> that's that's a good pick. I. I envy you for getting that pick. I wish I could have gotten them later on. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, well, my next uh, pick and my final singer, as much as, as much as that pains me, will be Celine Tam. Okay. Uh, she's got good branding. Everyone knows uh, her as that Celine. And uh, she's Laverne Cox's golden buzzer. So I think she'll do pretty well. I think that's a really good pick. Uh, she's she's got a lot of personality. She's a lot of fun. Uh, she could sing any uh, late '90s and early 2000s um, adult contemporary songs. So I think she'll be a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let's see. I've got my one, two, and I've got three singers. So I got two more singers. I got to get. Um, I'm gonna go with. Uh, I think I'm going to go with Angelina Green. Okay. Um, now, her she's also kind of got that story uh, as well that her parents are divorced. I'm not sure that's going to come into a lot a, a play. I don't think that's going to come into play a lot. Um, they mentioned it early on in her audition, but I don't think um, it's going to be that big a deal. But she's she's a really good singer. I think she, she's got really good pitch. Uh, I think she could. She's probably going to sing any type of pop song, or uh, you know, modern day song. So I just, I think she's going to do do really well. Yeah, uh, I don't really remember her very much, but uh, she could be a good dark horse. I think that's an interesting choice. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to go. 
Um, uh, I think I'm going to go with uh, Chase Goring. Okay. And I cool. think that will max out my um, singers. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, that's all my singers. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of Chase's. You know, his two songs that, that he sang, are, you know, he sings his originals, which is great. Uh, mm-hmm. But I think he sings them way too fast. I'm not a big fan of the rapping. Um, I want to hear songs that I can sing to. I think DJ Khaled sing, said that he could imagine Chase's songs being on the radio. And I don't agree with that. Uh, I think songs that you want to hear on the radio are songs that, you're, that you can sing along with. Yeah. But I think people, I think people are going to like him because he sings his original songs. He does play the guitar with when he sings, uh, so I think he's going to have uh, a big following, even though I'm not that big of a fan of him. Yeah, I I think that's a smart choice, honestly. So my next choice, I gotta skip over <laughs> some singers here because I hit my limit. So I am gonna go with Preacher Lawson because okay. uh, he's he seems to have a mass appeal. So why not? And uh, also, he has no stand-up competition. No, he doesn't. But I don't think that's going to matter because they're not competing against other people in their genre. Um, he kind of struggled a little bit this last time, according to the, the judges thought. I think he's great. I think that's a great pick. That's a great non-singer pick. Um, I love the comedians. I had him pretty high on my list. Uh, I probably would have gone with him next if you hadn't got him. So you're right along with me is where it comes on these picks, but that's okay. There's, we're, there's, we're kind of thinking along the same lines here. Yeah, I, I think we're probably going to be fighting over the rest of these now that we're out of singers. <laughs> yes, I will agree with that. Okay, go ahead and make your next pick. Oh, uh, okay. My next choice is Eric Jones because uh, I don't know. He's just a good magician. <laughs> So no, I, he is a good magician. You're right. Yeah, so uh, I think uh, his talent will, will bring him far. Uh, Demian Aditya was another name I, I was uh, sort of seeing a lot, just thinking about how popular uh, their performances have been. But I think Eric Jones is just going to do better in these next rounds. So I think he's going to come out on top. I agree with you. I think he's had some time to kind of rethink his act. I even think he did well in the in the judge cuts. I'm not sure why they weren't very high on him. Everyone else seems to think seems to think he did a great job. Uh, so we'll we'll see. I, I hope that he can recover and uh, really knock it out this next time. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm gonna go with uh, Billy and Emily. Okay, cool. Not Junior and Emily. Billy and Emily, uh, the roller skating brother sister act, which still kind of weirds me out a little bit. There's just <laughs> seems to be a lot of sexual tension there between the two of them, and um, but they're they're enjoyable to watch. Uh, they were on. I think Britain's Got Talent at one point, so they're they're very familiar with this kind of atmosphere. Oh yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure they're going to get in the top five. You know, at this point, I'm trying just to get get points um, <laughs> because I, I I don't I don't think any of the last few picks are going to get into the top five. So there's there's no sleepers left in this yeah in these picks. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that's a very good choice, I think, for where we are. Um, okay, so then I'm gonna go uh, next with um, Artyon and Paige. Really? Yes. Um, again, I don't think they're going to get to the winners. Uh, into, uh, in, sorry, into the top five. They may not even get to the finals. Um, but I, I think people are going to enjoy them. I think they're going to vote for them. Um, I think they're going to come out with kind of a different dancing act this next time. Hopefully it's not uh, something from Dirty Dancing again. Uh, some guys I listened to or, or, or watched earlier said they should do something from Greece. <laughs> uh, so uh, we'll just kind of see what Artyon and Paige can do in the next round. All right. Interesting pick. My final choice is going to be 
the Pompeo family dogs. Um, I don't know a lot about dog acts, I guess, or how good these guys are, but a dog act has won before, so I feel like I have to be careful not to underestimate this act. Uh, no, I, I agree with you. You know, we have two dog acts here, this one and, um, Sarah and Hero. As far as acts go, I think that they're the better act, but I think people will relate more to, um, Sarah and Hero. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I agree with you there. She was, uh, Sarah and Hero were just right after that on my list of people to pick, so... Yeah, I you make a good point. Okay, so we have ten acts now, five singers, five non singers. Yeah. How do you how do you feel about your picks? Uh I feel pretty good. I I think I got a lot of the people I wanted, so Good. Good. I just looking at this, I think yours is probably a little bit stronger than mine is. Uh you know, if we gave it a grade, you'd probably get an, an A or an, an A minus I'd probably get a B plus on my picks, you know, singing Trump, light balance. Um, those, those are really good, really good picks. Um, and then my top ones, Colin cloud, Angelica Hale. Um, I just, you know, looking at my board, I just don't know if it's going to be as strong as your board. Well, you never know. It only takes one. It does. It only takes one. That's all we need to, to, to win the whole thing. So, uh, anything else on our, our draft picks here? I I'm looking forward to uh seeing how this shakes out. I guess uh as soon as corner finals we can start putting points on our list. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, once uh once they announce the results in quarter finals, then we'll start adding points. Hey, if anybody out there wants to give us feedback on our lists or think if we should have gone with someone else, let us know. Hit us up on uh on Twitter or send us an email. Uh, on Twitter, we're at AGT time or send us an email, uh, agtcast at gmail.com. And we'd love to hear what you thought of our picks. Absolutely. Well, if you don't have anything else for the fantasy draft, we'll kind of just sit back. Uh, Tuesday night, uh, the performances. Wednesday night is the live show. We're going to change our schedule a little bit. Uh, since the live shows are starting, we'll record Thursday and we'll talk about both the performances, and the results on the same show. So until next Thursday, everyone have a good week. Thanks for listening, guys.